Music has charms to soothe the savage beast, especially if the music is by the insane clown posse and the beast is a juggalo. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I'm Jules, here for this episode of D News. Why do we like the music we like? Now, I'm not talking about genre. There's no scientific explanation for why people like yodeling, at least not in this episode. No, I mean something more fundamental. Why do we like the very sounds that make up all the different genres? What is it about certain combinations of notes that strike a chord within us? Well, for hundreds of years, it was thought that the answer was physics. Sound waves from musical notes that are certain intervals apart interfere with each other, and depending on the interval, the new waveform they create will have a distinct pattern. Notes a fifth apart, like C to G, create a nice repeating pattern, and we call this consonance. But lower that G just a half step to F sharp, and suddenly the new waveform pattern goes crazy, dodging, dipping, diving, ducking, and dodging all over the place. And this is called dissonance. If a dissonant chord uses two notes that are close together, like C and C sharp, then the waveform they generate will be confusing in your brain. The frequencies are too close together for your auditory nerves to distinguish, and the wave interference will make it sound like there's one weird note that's rapidly getting louder and softer. This is known as beating. 19th century German physicist and physiologist Hermann von Helmholtz pointed at the beating effect and said that it was the reason we find dissonant chords ugly and don't use them in our music. The idea has a nice ring to it, but lately it's been turned on its ear. In 2012, Marion Cazenou of the University of Montreal and Josh McDermott of New York University teamed up to test if beating was the reason that people are averse to dissonance. They gathered a group of people who couldn't distinguish pitch, melody, or sing in tune, which is actually a musical disorder called amusia. They played them and a control group consonant and dissonant chords and sounds with and without beating. As expected, the amusics couldn't distinguish consonant from dissonant chords and weren't put off by them like the control group was. Surprisingly though, the group with Amusia disliked the beating just as much as their karaoke-capable counterparts. This suggests that yes, while beating may play a part in our dislike of dissonant sounds, it's not the only factor at play. McDermott reasoned that maybe we're conditioned to like the sounds we do by the music we're exposed to. In order to study this though, he'd have to find a group of people who had never heard of Western music. And that wasn't easy. Our music is ubiquitous. It's impossible to escape Taylor Swift, musically or otherwise, we used to date. But McDermott managed to find 12,000 people who had never dated or heard the dulcet tones of T-Dog Swift. As an assistant professor at MIT, McDermott teamed up with Ricardo Godoy of Brandeis University to study a remote Amazonian tribe called the Chimane people. The Chimane are a farming and foraging society with limited exposure to Western culture. McDermott and Godoy played a variety of sounds to 100 of them, as well as nearby Bolivian farmers, city dwellers in Bolivia's capital, La Paz, and American musicians and non-musicians. They found that across four of the five groups, the preference of consonant chords to dissonant ones was always there, to some degree. Except with the Chimane people. They showed no preference for one sound over the other whatsoever. McDermott and Godoy knew that they weren't dealing with an entire tribe of amusics because they responded to what is called acoustic roughness, or rapidly modulating unpleasant tones. This led the researchers to conclude that we learn to like the sounds we're exposed to, and preference for chords is not something hardwired. So when you hear a song on the radio for the first time and hate it, but then you can't stop bumping your head to it the next time you hear it, feel free to blame science for your new Katy Perry addiction. If you're an avant-garde musician out to change the world's perception of music, it'd probably help you if you had a website to spread your sound. No domain extension will help tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. And because you watch D News, you can get 15% off domain.com's names and web hosting by using the code DNews when you check out. The four right chords can make me cry, especially if they're played loud enough to burst my eardrums. To learn how sound can physically break you, check out Julian's video here. Is it possible for a sound to be so loud it makes you dead? The European Space Agency seems to think so. The ESA actually has an array of four gigantic horns at the large European acoustic facility in Nordwijk, the Netherlands. And if they crank it up to 11, the horns can produce sound as loud as 154 decibels. So what's the worst sound you can think of? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to D News for new videos every day of the week.